Hey, welcome everyone. Today we're going to be discussing the six most common mistakes seen when recapping vintage electronics. This might include old audio gear, old transmitting and ham radio equipment, old computers, old vintage games, you name it. All right, a quick disclaimer. These are in no order of importance or in frequency of occurrence. These are just things I've observed in my 35 years of restoring vintage electronics. Okay, mistake number one, mistaking factory component glue for leaking capacitors. If you'll notice here, these capacitors are glued to the board. It's part of the manufacturing process to hold all these components in place while they maybe go through a soldering bath or whatnot to solder them. It's pretty easy to look at this top left one here and see that these are big chunks of glue holding down these capacitors. Maybe this is easy to tell because it's yellow, but it, you know, it could look like a leaking capacitor. But over here, this really starts to look a lot like some stuff has leaked out of this capacitor, when in reality, it's not the case. This is factory glue. Similarly here, you'll notice the little black swipe around the side of this one. It's just some glue to hold it down. It's not leaking. Similarly here, if you'll notice the thing that tips me off typically that it is not a leaky capacitor and that it is glue is that it is smooth and rounded, kind of like how glue might would flow. It's pretty easy to tell on these bottom right ones down here. It looks a lot like glue, but you can still see the smooth rounded flow from it. Okay, it's here, smooth rounded flow. Contrast, when you have leaky capacitors, it is not smooth and round. You typically have something that looks very acidic or very caustic, and it is typically got a powdery nature to it, and you can tell it's kind of eating away or etching at components and leads. You can see it starts to corrode things, makes it turn green. You can see it here, it's kind of a white powdery looking. You can see it coming out of the end of the capacitors here and out of the top of the capacitors here. I also mentioned they may have bulging tops. Okay, you see these capacitors, see how they're starting to pop up on the top? See how these popped up and finally opened here on the top and the stuff started coming out. That's very different than this smooth flowing stuff out of the bottom. That's how you can tell the difference between leaky capacitors and component glues, sometimes used called bond during the manufacturing process. Mistake number two, the factory got it wrong sometimes. Okay, so what I've observed over the years is many times the polarity marked on the board and the capacitor inserted into it don't align. And that was a factory mistake, not in the placement of the component, but in the marking of the circuit board. I've seen it many times on Marantz units. I've seen it even more on Sansui stereos. It's a very common thing to see this. So when you, when you look down and you see something marked plus, but then the negative part of the capacitor is, is inserted there, somebody got it wrong. Engineers make mistakes too. If you want more proof, here's a thread from Audio Karma. Look at this, just talking about the Sansui 9090 dB. One capacitor after another after it no, another that it shows listed wrong on the board. Even more so, service manuals are sometimes wrong too, right? Here's a whole thread out there on Marant service manuals that have corrections that need to be made. So sometimes you got to trust what's on the board and what's actually working, not necessarily the manual, not necessarily the markings on the boards. Mistake number three, incorrectly replace capacitors, aka measure twice, cut once. I've heard, I'm sure you've heard that in the carpenter world. It applies to the electronics world as well. Mark your capacitors just how they came out of the board. Now look, it doesn't do any good to go to your capacitor and put a little dash where the uh, negative mark is. The capacitors are already marked with positive and negative on them. They usually have a negative stripe down one side, okay? What you're marking is an orientation of that capacitor. This is a picture from one of my videos. I was recapping a turntable power supply board. If you'll notice, I put a mark towards the front of the turntable on every one of these capacitors. So once I pull it out, it's really easy for me to tell that that part of the capacitor was facing forward and then I can look at the stripe on it and I can easily tell it gives me relevance in my orientation. That way when you take one out and you put one back in, you know you'll get it the correct direction. Mistake number four I see a lot. Using larger value capacitor is acceptable and or better. Okay, that's not always the case. And I said here, the real answer, it depends. So in power supplies, more capacitance may be okay. Typically in solid state, 
if you had something with 100 microfarad and you replaced it with a 150 or 200 microfarad capacitor, probably not a big deal, okay? But you want to test it and make sure. In a tube power supply, the first tube following the tube rectifier typically has limit. You want to check the data sheet for that tube. It may tell you you, can't, you can use only 30 or 40 microfarads in the first capacitor following the tube. Failure to do that and put something larger there may shorten the tube life and or cause it to fail. You know, the other thing here is rounding up down a little bit on non-standard values is typically okay. You may be restoring something and it has a 0 0.05 microfarad capacitor, which is not a common value these days and you decide, hey, I'm going to replace it with a 0 .047. Probably not that big a deal because most of these were plus or minus 10% tolerance devices anyway, and they could have varied that much even from the factory new. But in audio circuits, it matters, okay? It can affect the frequency response, roll off, bandwidth, many other elements of the circuits because in audio circuits, a lot of capacitors are not just used for filtering and power supplies. They're used to set various low frequency roll offs, high frequency roll offs, coupling, decoupling. Capacitors serve a lot of. So if you go in there and there's a 10 microfarad and you say, wow, I'm going to put it in a 47 microfarad because it'll give it more oomph and more capacitance. Well, you may have just turned your low pass filter into something that all of a sudden your amplifier only has 8K of bandwidth, right? You could cause some problems for yourself. Going up in value, voltage value, is typically okay, but you got to be careful of the physical size limitations. You know, if you've got a 16 volt capacitor and you're replacing it with a 100 volt capacitor, a 100 volt may be three times as large as the 16, and will it even fit where you're trying to put it? But it doesn't hurt to have a larger value voltage wise. Mistake number five ordering capacitors from eBay is okay, or is it? Okay, it depends. I have bought stuff off of eBay before because I needed it. I was in a pinch, couldn't find a value somewhere else, but I was also smart about it, okay? I would look at the capacitors. I would ask if they knew when they were manufactured, right? Here, this is just an auction I picked up offline. 400 microfarad Nikikon capacitors. And then you see this box here in the picture. Well, you don't know if those capacitors were manufactured last year or in 1987. You have no way of knowing. So email them, ask them. Ask these questions, okay? Be smart about it. The other thing you can do is buy from well-known parts houses, okay? Mauser, DigiKey, Farnell, others, okay? eBay is a third-party source. Just be careful and be smart about it. There's probably a lot of good capacitors on eBay. I'm not telling you not to buy them there. I'm just saying be smart about it. There are fake capacitors on eBay. I try to stick to ordering from my local country. I'm in the United States. If I'm buying something online, I try to buy it from somewhere in the United States. I'm not saying every capacitor that comes out of China is fake. I'm just saying the likelihood goes up. You can see here both some capacitors stuffed inside of other cans. You also see here some fake bumblebee capacitors that are out on the market. Just be cautious and be smart, ask questions. And if, if all else fails, you can always default back to the DigiKey, Mauser, Farnell, etc. And our last major faux pas would be shotgun approach. Okay, you can see here the shotgun pattern. Pellets hit the paper all over the place all at one time. Okay, so what am I talking about as it relates to replacing capacitors? I'm telling you, recap one section at a time. When you open up a vintage piece of gear, Go in, maybe recap the power supply, then hook the unit up, make sure it still works. Then go recap the preamp board, make sure it still works. Go re recap one of the driver boards, make sure it still works. Go recap one of the output boards, make sure it still works. What you don't want to do is sit down for three or four or six hours and recap an in a unit from one end to the other, replace maybe this many capacitors, a good 40 or 50 laying there, okay, inside of this unit. You get done, you go hook your unit up, it doesn't play. You got a problem, okay? Maybe you're blowing a fuse. Where do you go back to at that point? You've replaced 50 or 60 components. You have no idea which one. Whereas if you'd have done small area by area, you'd at least know where it was. the problem was isolated to. You could double check all those things. You could go back to a schematic and trace things down. It'll save you a lot of time avoid the shotgun approach. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on the six most common mistakes. Look, this was not designed to be a definitive guide to all things about replacing electrolytic capacitors. It was really just to 
a video to make you think a little bit, to make you maybe be a little smarter about where you buy your components, maybe a little smarter about the methodical approach you use to recapping, in general just to make you think. Hope you guys enjoyed.